How do I, how do I hold on so I don't give up just before the miracle? How do I do that? Well, number one, get a hold of yourself. Don't look for somebody else to do your cheerleading for you. Understand, listen to me, listen to me, look at me, look at me, look at me, understand this. Sometimes, most times, it's going to be you and God, and that's it. First Samuel chapter 30 is an awesome story, uh, uh, an illustration of, of this very fact. David and his, his men, King David, well, he wasn't king yet, had gone out trying to get food, trying to get supplies, trying to survive. On their way back in the distance, they see that the village that they were living in, where they left their families, where they left their wives and children, Smoke is rising in the distance, so they know, oh, gosh, we're in trouble. By the time they get there, they find that village has been burned to the ground. There's nobody left there. They're not dead, thank God, but they're gone. They've been kidnapped. They've been taken. And so David now is in great danger. I'm, I'm looking at 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk about stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. The King James Version says it this way. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you're going to have to encourage yourself. Sometimes there won't be anybody else around. Sometimes people, you know what? And the more you go through, sometimes, the less people want to be around you, the less they want to listen. So you're going to have to receive your encouragement directly from God. Are you with me? Don't wait for somebody to be your cheerleader. David prayed, but watch this now. David got a hold on his own emotions. After all, he had lost two. He lost two of his wives, his children. Now, he's the leader, but he's got emotions just like everybody else. But he had to get a grip on himself. He got a grip on himself. He wasn't going to be ruled by his emotions. He prays and he asks God, What should I do? And God says, go after them. You'll overtake them, and you're going to recover everything. And that's exactly what happened. But everybody else in his camp is crying. Even his his mighty men, his SWAT team, his Navy SEALs are crying and crying and crying. And David says, I can't afford to lose it. I can't afford to get into my emotions. Sometimes you just got to get to that place. Well, you just, you cannot afford. Why? Because if you get into those emotions, most likely you're going to make the wrong decision. Get out of the emotion. Understand this. You say, well, how do I do that, Pastor, when it's so overwhelming? This is what you say to yourself. Something I've said to myself and I've taught from this pulpit for 20 some odd years, okay? It was no surprise to God. If you can get a hold of that in the midst of that attack, when, when, when the fear is trying to paralyze you, if you could just stop and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This might have taken me by surprise, but it surely has not taken God by surprise. And if it hasn't taken God by surprise, guess what? He's got an answer. You listen to me? But if you let yourself go with your emotions and just fall into pieces, you're probably not going to survive that attack. 